is your impression of this year's Memphis team, and what have you seen from Seth Hennigan, a quarterback? I know it's really impressive as a freshman last year. Well, I think they're all good. I mean, they've got most of their guys back, too. I think they're a good team. I think they have good speed. They've got some big guys, and then I thought that uh, – their quarterback had an impressive uh, first year, and so I'm sure he's better than he was last year. Uh, last year, that game against Memphis was one of the ga- one of the games where your offense kind of got to a slow start. You had a few of those last year, I guess. Well, what do you think the key is to getting that offense maybe a bit more sp- uh, consistent, like throughout a game, and, and as opposed to last year? Do you think experience kind of plays a huge role in that? Well, I think experience helps. I think, but you got to utilize it, and then I think that. You know, we've had good practices, so we got to, you know, mirror what uh, we do on Tuesdays and Wednesdays when we do it right. And then I think that, you know, we got to go out and play well. That's the biggest thing is not get too sidetracked with uh, anything they're doing. Just uh, have a really hard focus on us and what we do, you know. John? Do you think you all have an extra chip on your shoulder heading into that game considering how last year's ended? Well, I mean, maybe. I mean, we had some guys that I think, uh, uh, I think we had some guys that, uh, you know, owed uh, Memphis more respect than they got. And then, uh, and we've got to make sure that, uh, you know, that's one thing. But then the other thing is, is, you know, I mean, if you take pride in being a good football player, you should do it all the time. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be dictated by the opponent. It should be dictated by you want to be the best person you can be. And then, I, of course, I get a kick out of, uh, you know, somebody talks about being in the NFL and all that other stuff, and they practice one way, and they talk about the NFL the other way. I mean, you know, I mean, there's none of this as a do-over. They, they just cut you, you know. And then, uh, and you know, I mean, if you want to develop yourself into a special player, no matter where it is, and it doesn't really have anything to do with the NFL as far as I'm concerned, um, because wherever you're at, if you're doing something, if you're investing the time to do it, you want to do it the best you can. And so that should that should be enough. If it's not, and they want to draw from some chip thing, go ahead, but it better be making them better. Well, I mean, have you – you kind of alluded to it there a little bit, but in practice for the guys that played big roles in that game, did you do you use how last year's went at all as bulletin board material for them? Not really. I'm not a big bulletin board guy. Coach, you've had some time now to kind of see the transfer portal in action. You had several players leave and several come in. How do you feel like maybe your team has been impacted by the transfer portal now positively and maybe negatively as well? I, I don't see it having been negative. I do think that the, the transfer portal is a very reckless uh, approach, um, you know, the, in its current condition. I mean, I think they – nothing – you know, transfer if you want, but there ought to be a window. Uh, and then, for the most part, uh, we left. Uh, we lost either two types of players. Um, you know, the type that uh, one didn't belong here, or two that were great people that just wanted an opportunity to play more. And uh, and uh, then I, you know, I've been excited about the guys we have. And so in some cases, we'll see how they do. Uh, but we've been excited about the ones that uh, we took. I don't, uh, and I guess we'll see how it plays out. I don't see it as a a total problem solver. I think it can't be ignored as a resource, but I think that, um, uh, you know, you want to build your team around guys that you've worked with uh, since they got out of high school, you know, that really have an attachment and a unity to the program and, uh, you know, the, the university. Mike, last year I think you believed after the game that that punt return was officiated correctly. Have you looked at that play? Have you have you changed any opinions on that? I think I think you could categorically, um, uh, I think you could categorically, uh, uh, without getting in trouble, without any of that stuff. I think you could categorically assume nearly entirely the opposite, and I never said that. Hey, Coach, uh, Rufus Harvey listed first on the depth chart, and then I, I know a couple weeks ago had a really good scrimmage, and he's been one of those guys you've really praised throughout camp. What's he done this offseason that's kind of elevated him into more playing time this year? Uh, he's played well for a while. You know, I think he gets better and better all the time. I think he, you know, he's the biggest thing Rufus brings is he's really excited to play. 
he's incredibly excited uh, to play football and uh, um, and uh, uh, yeah, I, the, the, just his eagerness and his thrill of playing the game, I think, is is uh, one thing that's contagious. I think it helps him play. I think those are the kind of guys you want out there uh, that love football for the sake of football. And, you know, Rufus is all of that. Coach, I know you've been doing this a long, long time, uh, several decades now, but still the first week of the season and the first game of the year. Just what, what's kind of your uh, excitement level for this? And maybe on your, uh, you know, I don't know what your favorite days of the year are. Maybe where, where is it at on, on that scale? But just your excitement level, you know, even after decades of doing it. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Um, I really just to play. You're just excited to play. I mean, games are the best part of it. That's what you work towards. And then also... I mean, there's a point uh, to where uh, there's a point to where um, uh, you know I think that uh, you're tired of playing each other. You want an opponent. You want to play uh, uh, somebody different, and you want to you know I mean there's a uh, you get to a point where everybody knows everybody so well. You want to test it out on uh, something outside that you don't see as often, and so I think we're all excited about that. Coach, what do you kind of make of that competition at right tackle between Cameron Jones and Albert Reese? I think that they're both good players. I think they both do good things. I think uh, Cam's got experience. Albert's really strong, long arms, and and put together well physically. And uh, uh, you know, I think the combination of both both of them, they'll both play. You know, I don't. Um, you try to have three to a side, and so I think uh, uh, both of them will play significantly. Coach, we didn't see uh, Jaden Crumity out there too much those last couple of weeks of practice. He was listed as the starter on the depth chart. Any expectations on having him available this season? Yeah, we think he'll go out there and uh, have a great season. So, Steve. Coach, often the best evaluators of defense are offensive coaches, and it seems like from our point of view, that this may be the most talented defense you've had since you've been at Mississippi State. What are your thoughts about your defense? Maybe have you seen them improve this year? I think they play together better. You know, they've logged some snaps with one another. I think they play together better. I think they play with more precision. Some have gotten bigger and stronger, which I think is good. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I agree with you. I think they're better than they were last year, but now they got to prove it. they got to go out and play that way. Coach, could you uh, evaluate your kicking game going into the game week and how much progress have they made uh, since last season? Uh, I, I, well, I, I think we're better. We kind of only have one direction to go. We did a good job kicking it through the end zone, but we need to, need to be good at kicking it uh, through the sticks, and so we'll see how that goes, you know. The receiving force has been a little bit up and down this offseason. Where would you say that they stand right now as a whole? I think they're average. You know, they can prove otherwise. Right now, we're average. John. Mike, this is your uh, third year here, and a lot of those young guys that you had that first year, now they're older, more experienced. Would you say this is the most confidence you've had in a team at Mississippi State compared to the other two heading into a season? I think that's accurate. You know, we're not a real old team yet, uh, but we are an experienced team. You know, we've got uh, a number of guys that have started for two years, so I think they're bound to improve. Going back to the wide receiver question, uh, you talked about the three-horse race with Ra Ra, Justin, and uh, Tulu. On the depth chart, you have Ra Ra listed as a starter, and the other two kind of um, as the or for there for the backup. Did something separate Ra Ra in the last week of practice that, that you felt comfortable with that move? I think all three of them are in a pretty stiff competition, and that's kind of a day-by-day -day thing, uh, you know. And so we'll we'll see how they do. I think there's uh, we got three quality guys, but uh, you know, as far as to, you know, we're looking for somebody to aggressively try to take control of that position. And right now. You know, I think between the three, it's it's kind of a coin flip. So we'll see how it unfolds. Robbie? Last year, speaking of Ra Ra, he made kind of an immediate impact as a true freshman. Are, are there any players that have stood out to you in that in that class, that freshman class, that could kind of do the same thing that he did and make an impact this year? 
Uh, that's too early to tell. Maybe you know. I think uh, we'll we'll just have to see. Um, I wish I had a better answer. You know, sometimes you see those guys; they do something good in practice, and you know they're either better or worse than you expect. Coach, kind of getting back to the the Memphis thing. You you always want to be excited to play that first game. Does it help to have a, an opponent that you're familiar with, or? Maybe a team that left a better taste in your mouth to kind of get the guys to lock in, or, or do you just expect them lock in for anybody? Well, if they if they don't lock in, you got the wrong guys. If they don't have the lock in, you got to kind of adjust the depth chart or find other guys, you know. And then, uh, and so you know, those that aren't locked in, we're going to try to we'll try to replace them if uh, if that's the case. But uh, I'd like to think that's not the case. When considering the entire schedule, a lot of coaches just take one game at a time approach. Is that pretty much your philosophy? Yes, and uh, yes, and guys that don't take that approach, I'm kind of curious what exactly it is they're thinking. Mike, uh, what have you kind of seen from Will like throughout training camp up to now, and what's been the biggest thing that stuck out to you about him heading into his third year? I think he's steadily improved. You know, he's, he is bigger and stronger than he was. Um, he's bigger and stronger, and then I think that he's uh, – and I never thought he had glaring weaknesses. Uh, you know, his first uh, weakness when he first started was experience. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, he's gotten better at uh, really all phases of his game, and I think, you know, he's got you know, more that he can do, but uh, he needs to just continue to improve. Just to follow up on that, what have you seen from Sawyer maybe this offseason in this camp to, to feel comfortable, you know, if there comes a situation where you need to put him in a game? <clears throat> well, we've, we've been able to invest a lot of reps in him, which I think is important. And I think it's been important to, uh, 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 to you know, to get the reps in him. And then he's had uh, some ups and downs. But, you know, now he's very much on an upswing and uh, steadily improves. He's always been kind of a... Uh, an explosive player, and then, but young guys, you always want to make them more consistent. Well, you want to make everybody more consistent, but especially young players. And and he's getting more and more consistent, and just a, a, a better command. There's a difference between being able to draw a play up and being able to automatically execute something. Chris, uh, to what degree do you think Will's pre-snap responsibilities will expand this year? Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how Will uh, how Will does and what he picks up, uh, what he's can sort out. I think it naturally does, just as he becomes more aware of stuff. Um, but you know, we've always uh, given our quarterbacks a lot of pre-snap uh, uh, pre-snap uh, discretion and decision making, and uh, and that'll continue. But he does improve at it. As far as where he's at exactly, is difficult to say. Else? Caleb Ducking didn't get a lot of reps last year, but it just seems like he's been real steady during camp and all that. I mean, what have you seen from him, and do you feel like he can slide in there and be one of your better receivers this year? He's practiced well. He's practiced well, and uh, you know, and and I think that he's really kind of. Uh, uh, over the last year, really become a pretty good receiver, and uh, you know he's always had some ability, but he's uh, really you know starting to get more consistent, starting to really understand and know his role, and uh, I've been kind of impressed with the progress he's made. Any other questions for Coach? 